Okay. So. Uh, okay. Uh, Slideshow. Beginning. So. Welcome to this seminar on Open Data Directive. Uh, my name is Maria Rebinder, and I'm a, a senior legal counsel here at Aalto University. And uh, these uh, slides are licensed uh, with the Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License. So uh, Open Data Directive, uh, it was, um, um, uh, it was um, given uh, two years ago, and it's the Directive on Open Data and the Reuse of Public Sector Information. This is a so-called uh, PS1, uh, PS2 Directive. We already had one uh, directive before that on, on reuse of public sector information. Uh, this uh, directive has the first uh, legal definition of research data that we have in, in Europe. I have been involved in drafting the research data policies of uh, University of Helsinki and uh, Aalto University. And when we did those policies a few years back, we didn't have a legal definition on research data, but now, now we have one. Uh, so research data uh, is documents in a digital form, according to this directive, in this directive uh, that are commonly accepted in the research community as necessary to validate research findings and results. So yeah, just a note, this directive means uh, concerns documents that are in, in digital uh, form. Of course, there can be other types of research data as well. And uh, the data, uh, this, this directive doesn't have obligations saying that you must open data. There are many reasons why you would not open data. Uh, it can contain trade secrets um, that you can use to make patent filings. So it's okay to use data uh, for any societal impact. Uh, so commercialization of data is still totally acceptable. Keeping data as trade secret is still totally acceptable. But there are uh, when when so you can uh, either publish open data or not. But if you make it uh, data available for reuse, then there are obligations in the directive. So. What, what is the format used? Uh, can you charge on it? Um, transparency concerning the data, licenses. Uh, so these are the things we are going to discuss today, especially the license uh, required. Uh, so um, um, the general principle is that European um, EU policy is that uh, we should benefit from the data also commercially so that there would be new jobs created, uh, economic growth uh, created uh, in Europe. Uh, the, the data, uh, data uh, economy is dominated by United States and uh, Asian uh, so um, if you data is usually used in platforms and on this data platform economy, 74% um, is uh, by, by uh, US companies about 30% um, about is Asian. Um, Africa is 2% um, of, of data economy and Europe is 4%. So it's understandable that this European policy uh, wants to allow commercial use of data. So when data is published, for example, research data, it should be um, allowed to be used both in non-commercial and, and commercial purposes. Um, so article 10 of this directive then 
um, tells us on uh, research data specifically. Uh, first, we should have uh, uh, national policies, as, as we actually do on the, we have a strong uh, open science policy uh, in, in, in Finland. And uh, the recommendations um, are recommending using the fair principles for research data. And it is okay to take into consideration intellectual property rights, personal data protection, uh, confident trade secrets, um, uh, security and legitimate commercial interests. So uh, this does not place an obligation to open data, but the policy should be as open as possible, as close as necessary. And um, open access policies uh, should be addressed. Um, and we have a open access policy at Alta University that is following these lines. So we support that data should be fair and as open as possible, as close and as necessary, uh, also in, in Alta University policy as uh, required by the uh, directive. Uh, if, if uh, research data uh, is opened, um, then, then this, uh, there are minimum rules uh, for how it's practically arranged. Uh, if data is opened, so if you pu publish data uh, in a repository such as Zenodo or, or other uh, subject-based repository, and if this research has been publicly funded, um, then uh, if it's funded by Alt University or, or other public funding such as EU funding or, or uh, Business Finland funding, uh, then if it's opened, the research data shall be reusable for commercial or non-commercial purposes. So the license you choose for the data should be for commercial or non-commercial purposes. And um, again, uh, legitimate commercial interests uh, can be taken into account. Uh, then the documents should be, where possible, machine readable. And uh, uh, that it would be that they should be available by electronic means. Um, research data that is published should be free of charge for the user. And uh, uh, for all the documents opened uh, according to this directive, you should use a standard licenses. And these standard licenses should be available in digital format and be processed electronically. Uh, member states should encourage the use of such standard licenses. We have a, um, we have a recommendation for license uh, for the um, public sector reuse. I, I was involved in drafting that. Uh, it's given by our Ministry of Finance and uh, it points to the same same directive as this. And of course, uh, there is this directive will be implemented uh, international law this summer. Uh, the Finnish law is no, not yet accepted by parliament, not yet translated into English, but it will be laki ereiden julkisten yritysten tiedon uudelleen käytöstä ja laki julkisin varoin tuotettujen tutkimusaineistojen uudelleen käytöstä. So it will be a law on, um, 
uh, on um, on public um, research data concerning research data produced by public funds. What this means in practice is that if you publish research data, you should follow the FAIR principles. So data should be findable, accessible, interoperable, reusable. And you should make that data reusable using a standard license that is machine readable and allows for both commercial and non-commercial use. Uh, that license is uh, Creative Commons Attribution International CC BY. Uh, it's similar to the um, open source software license uh, MIT, so that the only requirement is to attribute uh, the researchers and, and the source. I will, I will show you shortly what this means in practice and an example of, uh, of research that are published uh, with, with this license. Uh, just as a note, the same license is required uh, for Plan S funded scientific publications, uh, although that um, allows also for CC by share alike, but just to let you know that these same licensing requirements uh, also apply in different um, uh, different circumstances also to um, scientific publications, namely scientific publications that are funded by um, research funders who um, are taking part in the plan uh, as such as Academy of Finland and, um, and the AO Commission Horizon Europe. Um, so an uh, example of a data set. Let's see if I can show it to you. Okay, what didn't happen? Okay, well, let's stop here. Uh, do you have some questions? Um, I, I will show you what this means in, in practice. Let's see. So uh, here is a, uh, here is a, a data set that is published uh, in a repository, Zenoda repository. Uh, with open access. Uh, so, um, I assume that this would be fair data. I, I, uh, I haven't um, looked at the data set more, more specifically. I'm sure you would understand more of the data set. Um, uh, so, uh, here is the license. Creative Commons Attribution International. So this data can be used both for uh, non-commercial uh, research and also commercial entities such as um, um, such as um, pharmaceutical companies, etc. Uh, can can use this uh, data. And uh, as you see, it has been viewed quite many times and also uh, downloaded uh, uh, 11. Uh, and this is, of course, citable data, which is something that we drive. And uh, how you cite that is then, uh, you cite it as you would any publication. So uh, you would cite the, the researchers and the name of the uh, of the version, and this citation is required uh, if you don't attribute according to uh, the citation requirement, then you don't have a license. So, uh, Creative Commons CC BY does not mean 
that uh, you can use it in any way. This is legal requirement for the license. The attribution uh, must be given um, as, as asked by the researchers. And if you don't cite in this way, then the license does not come into force. So always remember, if you are using Creative Commons uh, licensed material, you have to, um, you have to um, use the material according to the license. And uh, here in uh, Zenodo, you just choose the license uh, when you are uploading the data. And they have a option for many different licenses, but this Creative Commons attribution 4.0 international uh, would uh, would um, be the license required by the open data uh, directive. And of course, it's widely used in open science, even though it hasn't been legally required uh, before this open data uh, directive. Uh, I also want to show you a bit more about the um, a bit more about the Creative Commons license. So someone just raised a hand. Great. Uh, is it okay to ask? Yes, yes, of course. Hi, Maria. Enrico here. Hey. So. Yeah, this is maybe something that is not clear to me because I'm ignorant when it comes to these <laughs> definitions. But like if like is a directive, is a European directive something that, you know, that if it is it like a law that if there is. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's implemented. It's, These are implemented into the Finnish law this summer, okay. but the it's not yet. But the directive is not a regulation. So, yes, these have to be implemented into the Finnish law before they become. But so then, legally binding. So does it mean exactly that it's legally binding? So that if I, let's say that I claim, I don't know, I'm collecting some data, I use the data and I claim in the paper that the data is openly available, but, but then I don't open it, I'm breaking the law kind of. Uh, well, yeah, if you open the data, but you don't use these uh, required licenses, then yeah, you are breaking yeah. the law, but I will see how that will be. Um, what 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 will the process be? Uh, yes. Would it be that um, you would be required? So yeah, it's um, it it is an interesting. I haven't seen this type of. Um, we have had only recommendations so far. Yeah, exactly. But also here, I think it was written. Also, the last sentence was sort of like um, that. It's a requirement. And then there was the last sentence, which was so, sort of saying that commercial interest shall be taken into. Um, so let's let's see how that is. I'm more thinking it that that sometimes uh, I'm not saying that scientists or or researchers are lousy, but but sometimes you know people they have good intention, let's say, to share the data, and they even write it in the paper. The data is available. But then maybe they don't have time to upload the data or make it available. Or yeah. then somebody asks and then actually they realize, oh, I lost the data. <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, you don't have to publish the data. This is, this is a bit hard to understand because uh, the open data require, does not require you to open data. <laughs> but if you open data, then you have to follow these requirements. So yes, you can totally leave your data unopened yeah. These open data are policies and recommendations, but you don't have to open the data. So but if you, you think, do you think that this could be kind of work on the other way around that maybe some, let's say, PhD students who know they don't have maybe the time to open the data properly, they rather state that they don't want to open the data, that the data is not open, so then they don't go into any legal risks or that that is that is a possibility but as i said there was also this sentence after the obligation to uh, fulfill these requirements that you know 
things will be taken into consideration. So yeah. I would be, um, I'm not, um, this is not criminal law, so nobody will go to jail, yeah. but it will, I think if this kind of data is seen that is not compliant with this legislation, then maybe if, for example, if universities opening the data, if it's, um, research result in an uh, externally funded project, uh, then um, then probably there would be uh, some some sort of information to the university that we should comply with this. So that's what I'm expecting, that there will be requirements to, um, there will be um, uh, messages requesting that these are, uh, and and not not like um, uh, strict legal measures such as starting uh, and, and definitely this is civil law not not criminal law so yeah, um, yeah. oh uh, Clement says that that uh, it's default license that's very interesting information. So if you don't change the license, then that's uh, default. That's very good. Yes, so that's very good because this is the CC, uh, CC by four has become the standard open science um, license. Uh, I was involved in the uh, recommendation for opening uh, Finnish public sector information and, and that has the same license the plan S has the same license requirement. So uh, this uh, CC by, um, it's um, CC by 4.0. And why 4.0? This is the newest um, license in the Creative Commons family. And this license is also the sui generis database right, which is essential in Europe for data. So, uh, so. Yes, that is also uh, CCO is also uh, also fulfills. Yeah, um, yeah, that was actually very um, bad uh, bad um, mistake from my side not to uh, not to see not to mention CCO. So CC. CC0, CC0 is uh, a waiver, and then you don't need or to attribute. Um, if you would combine big data and you would combine 100 data sets, then it's um, better to use CC0 because then you don't have the attribution stacking problem that you have to attribute 100 data sets or 1,000 or 10,000. So yeah, the attribute stacking is the problem for CC0. And many, uh, many repositories uh, also use CCO, and then they have sort of like a rules of the road. Um, like we looked at this, um, uh, this, um, uh, We looked at this. Um, this could also be. We could. You could also have it uh, with CC zero, and then just have have a um, CC, uh, and then just have this. Um, uh, this site. So you, you could have this also only as a, um, as a, you know, would you be so kind as to cite? And then of course in scientific, if you would cite this in a scientific article, you would follow the citation of a scientific article and, um, and, and cite this, and, but, but then a CCO would help you in a situation where you would uh, you would have the attribution stacking problem. 
So CCO is also uh, fulfills the open data directive. Um, uh, are you familiar with the Creative Commons licenses? I thought I'd mention something on them. Uh, so uh, Creative Commons system has uh, several licenses. Um, uh, and uh, there are six variations. Um, the in the licenses, and then there is the CC zero waiver. So um, uh, this attribution license is the most open, but you can also require uh, share alike. Uh, then. It's a so-called so uh, copyleft or, or, or uh, viral virus, so that it sort of contaminates the file where you use that. And then, uh, for example, if you would combine uh, share-alike uh, data sets, then you would have to also uh, publish them share-alike. And then you can also uh, ask that it's non-commercial and then you can also um, alternative to the share alike you can also share that there can be no derivatives so creative commons licenses come in uh, all uh, shapes and so you, it's it's uh, when you are uh, when you are using the CC BY, uh, it's important to indicate that it, it's exactly this attribution CC BY license. So that allows you to copy and uh, build upon the material and the terms are attribution and providing a link to the license and indicate if changes were made. Um, said the repository can uh, show you a license, uh, but you can also uh, include it in your uh, in your own work, uh, and then you would help others to attribute. You would uh, add. Uh, Uh, add this information. And um, so you would add this text, this text. And then you would copy the code so that uh, the license is uh, machine readable if you have a web page. Uh, so this is how, how you use the uh, Creative Commons licenses. And then we do have the, uh, also um, you can use, for example, in your lectures, Creative Commons uh, licensed, uh, licensed um, material, but then if, it's, if you need to attribute, then, then do, do, do attribute. Uh, where do I find now the... Okay. I also want to show the CC0. Yes, uh, data that can be shared on request does not follow the directive. So it's only um, when you publish data in a repository. Yes, if it's data is shared on request, then that doesn't apply. But then this is also for data that, because I can put on a repository data that is not accessible. Yes, 
yes, so if you put that, it, yeah, that type of data. Restricted access, yes. Yeah, exactly. You can still, we can still do it because yes, that's uh, what we, uh, what we have done and recommended doing uh, for the personal that data that we can, uh, we, we cannot be sure that it's anonymous data, so we cannot yeah. open it, but we can have it in Zenodo with restricted access. This does not, um, does, does not uh, concern that data. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it, it's, it's a very uh, limited, limited what it actually does uh, re require. Um, I will show you the CCO. So that is uh, even more open than the CC by. In the CC by, you had to attribute, but uh, CC zero, uh, there's no rights reserved. So yes, this is used by uh, by uh, data repositories. So uh, you can also use the CCO. So uh, share has CCO as a default. And um, for example, our National Gallery has published um, works with CC0. And uh, Kati mentioned, Kati Lakso mentioned that uh, also data, Dataverse has CCO as the default. So these would be your options for the publishing data in a repository, CC by or CCO, which is not a license, it's a, it's a waiver that waives all, all rights, including the right to be mentioned as, as the author of the data set. Uh, any any other uh, viewpoints or comments? Maybe I could ask a question. It's so great to have you here today. Uh, I was wondering uh, when we have repositories like Dataverse or or we have international scientific journals that are located somewhere abroad. Which country's legislation concerns me? Is it always like if I'm work in Finland? is Finnish legislation that binds me and it's not the legislation of the country where the journal is based or the data uh, repository is based? I would understand that it is um, about the public funding, that if you are publicly funded uh, from uh, Finland or, or publicly funded from uh, EU, then, then you should comply with this. So. Okay. That's my understanding that it's defined by the public funding. Okay, great. Thanks. It's a very good question. Yeah. But of course, many, many, also many funding bodies have their own uh, requirements for for data. And um, this will be implemented, as I said, international law. Uh, it, there's always, uh, or there has been two years period to implement this. And that uh, that is, um, coming to end during this, this summer. Uh, so we are now, uh, so this will um, apply to data sets uh, published after that date.
and uh, we we actually don't have that many uh, open access data sets um, from Aalto University researchers. So, um, hopefully, this doesn't discourage us. Enrico mentioned about uh, will will that the number of open data sets will will increase because that is the uh, university policy and also European Union policy and Finnish national open science policy that we would have more uh, open research data. But uh, if there are no more questions. I guess we could then close this session and um, I'm sure there will be more questions related to this and other uh, legal issues related to data. So I, I will be happy to, uh, to um, dig into those problems and, and find, find, find solutions. So please um, contact me with any questions that legal questions related to data.